Hi, this is Mark Bina with Smart Tech Research. I'm out here at 2026 CES at the Flight Club. Flight. With Maher Mata, who is the president of Infineon Technologies. Maher, we, we've spoken before. Um, this is really an interesting show. Um, the I, I, I could be completely wrong, but I think, first of all, I think it's going to be a big show from a, an attendance standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't uh, announced numbers yet, but I, I have to believe it's, it's going to be north of 150,000. I could be wrong, but it's very, very well attended. Lots of excitement. AI is the watchword. And you guys have been around a long time. You're one of the great premier ingredient companies in a variety of different spaces. We, we, you know, you gave a terrific introduction just a little bit ago uh, to us. When you look at the broad market right now, as a, because the great thing I, when I love to talk to you and, and your extended team, you guys have a window in terms of where the market is going because you're a design wins company, essentially. And I'm sure there's lots of really interesting meetings that I would love to be privy to where you can give kind of a, a perspective. Oh, by the way, this is going to be a hot category. This is going to be a hot category. Maybe this category is eh, going to be okay. What are you seeing in the market as one of the one of the premier solutions and greeting companies in the market? What are you seeing right now? Yeah, you know, you mentioned CES this year. It does feel like this year AI is becoming more more real. Uh, it, virtually everything has AI in it that that's on the show floor. So on one side you say, mm, is it the old dot com uh, bubble again? Is it really going to happen? I think what you're seeing uh, on the floor is hinting at what's to come. Will everything that we see today pan out? No, I think we all know some of the things will not pan out. But what, what struck me is the maturity of some of the solutions we see. Uh, the, the robotics area, it definitely seems to be coming more clear. Uh, they're starting to be clear whether the robots can do everything or whether it's a specialized robot. The use cases are becoming a little bit more clarified. Um, the automotive piece was very interesting. We're starting to see software-defined vehicles. vehicles. We saw several of them on the floor. Um, so some of the things we've talked about in the past are starting to come in. Uh, for me, kind of looking a little bit ahead could be the edge AI topic, right? So we've discussed a little bit about the partitioning of where all this AI compute is going to happen, cloud or the, versus the edge. We always believe that edge AI does have a place, uh, particularly from a efficiency point of view, latency point of view, uh, cost of ownership point of view, uh, and a user experience. So I, I think that's probably, if I was to look ahead a year, I'm going to guess Crystal we'll, start, we'll start to see more edge AI cases. Some of the wearables you start to see even on the show floor where some of the processing is done locally. Privacy is also important, yes. which would be another aspect. So, yeah, it's it's a great show. I don't know about the numbers, but you're right. It's going to be well. It feels well, busy. It feels busy. So, yeah. And, you know, you mentioned robotics. And I was at CS Unveiled. I was at Showstoppers. I was at Pepcom. And, you know, you, you flash back about five years ago, robot vacuums were hot. They still are hot. But the category that I think will become mainstream very quickly is robotic grass mowers. I mean, now you have multiple players. There were a few over the last couple of years, but now, because it's really tailor-made, frankly. I mean, it's really the next logical progression when you can't pass a robot vacuum inside your house. So I really think that's going to be a, um, a big category. The, the one category that you mentioned, and um, I'm not sure the average person really understands the phrase, but this whole software-defined vehicle piece Let's talk about why that's so important. You guys play a very, very big role in that and uh, why it's important, why you should care about it and uh, your perspective. Yeah, I mean, so the software defined vehicle is a little bit related to the edge topic as well, where, where the compute happens. So in some of the newer architectures, you're coming up with these zonal architectures. Yes. So each zone has its own compute. So a sensor at the wheel has the ability to process the information locally. So as we see uh, the automobile uh, have simplified number of main processors and, and, and then also edge compute, uh, that architecture allows you to simplify 
both from a development point of view. So you're now not having to develop uh, the whole thing in, w in one uh, program, if you will. You can chunk it out into smaller pieces. Uh, I also feel that connectivity is important. Uh, that's part of the reason why to, do, to be able to successfully implement the zonal architecture, you need certain connectivity between these zones. And so the ability to communicate between the zones is also important. So it's a combination of quicker development, flexibility, the right compute at the right place, uh, and then you just need to make sure you can connect them all, all quickly and have in, uh, interplay, uh, that they can all work together. And the, the interesting piece is this whole notion of Ethernet connectivity with the car, to me, is fascinating because but a lot of people think, well, why do you need Ethernet? Why do you need that kind of connectivity? And it's so important from an automation, from an autonomous driving experience, even from the multiple zonal architectures that with, with the car, you really need, to, need latency free capability. So let's talk about that for a second, the, the Ethernet component, because a lot of people may not think, well, why do we need Ethernet capability of the car? Right. Yeah, I mean, if you look at what's coming in the data and from a car, it's, it's tremendous. So you need something that's high speed. Uh, type one is a differential pair. So the, the wire harness has now become a problem. So if you can find a way to communicate to all these nodes that is very efficient in its implementation, less uh, harness, less copper, less, uh, it doesn't even really matter what the material is. You just want slimmer wires just for to, uh, to reduce costs and simplify manufacturing. Uh, and then you mentioned the latency, very important. You need yeah. something that's fast uh, and something that can be easily cascaded. Uh, so that, that architecture, by the way, and we talked about robotics, the irony is it it's also overlaps with the robotics. There, it's the same thing. You need quick latency, uh, short latency, so you, don't, so you can react quicker. The same harness topic, kind of a differential approach, differential pair approach rather than a, a thick cable is also a way to go. So... Uh, that's why Ethernet is so cool. It's got such, it's very efficient. Yes. It, it's low very cost, slim. Low, low cost. Low cost. It goes over long periods, uh, large uh, distances. Uh, it's a very well-known standard. It's high speed. So it, it, it ticks a lot of the boxes. Yeah, it, 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 what's amazing to me, if I had a flashback five years ago, if someone said to me, there's going to be an Ethernet attribute within the car, I would say, bye. You know, but no, I think you spell it out in a very, very compelling way. Last observation that I want to make is that sure. you know, the interesting thing about Infineon, and I've been working with you guys for several years, there seems to be a humility within the company. And I work with a number of companies that humility is not the first word that I would use. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But and maybe part of that is that you're a design wins company. You have to win designs. It's not off the shelf parts. Say you're, you're off the races. You, there's a lot of engagement. When you're working with, for example, an automobile, uh, an, uh, an automobile, ma uh, automobile manufacturer, where they make, where you're, you know, you're talking about a seventy-five thousand dollar car, you have to have a really, very, very strong relationship. To, from a corporate culture standpoint, I don't see a lot of that, and I and I say that in a very, very favorable way. That humility factor. Do you have any color you could talk about that? I know it's a very esoteric. No, thing. no, it's. Honestly, it's why I've been in this. I just turned 12 years with Infineon, and, and it's the longest amount of time I've spent with a company. I, I, and I've worked at a lot of great companies, and this humility is, is part of it. I don't know the genesis of it. I've, I always felt like we always, and, and I'll, I'll give you the pros and the cons because yeah. there is a downside to oh, be. Oh, yeah, there you. is. There is. <laughs> because uh, if your competitors are aggressive with their schedules, aggressive with their specs, and somebody doesn't know us, doesn't know our culture, and they do an A-B comparison between the claims, the instinct might be, well, these guys are gonna be quicker, these guys are gonna deliver more versus a company that might be a little bit more conservative in its nature. And we only we, we wanna deliver what we say. Right. If we tell you it's X, it's gonna be X. Yes. In some cases, we even pad that. And that's where it, it starts to hurt. So that's <laughs> that's the downside of this. If we If we're overly conservative, and if the customer doesn't know us, it could hurt us. Yes. On the plus side, when people get to know us, uh, we see huge benefit. And it's the same thing that once people know that, okay, these guys really uh, are going to do work very hard to deliver what they said. Right. That's where the value is. And you and that develops over time. This is not something that happens over one quarter, two quarters. It's not just it's, a, it's a single a, transaction. It's not a single transaction. Right. It's built over years. 
and you have to be able to navigate that, that the downsides where it's like, oh, we lost that deal because our schedule was longer than right. somebody else's. Okay, well, let's take a hard look. Did we over pad it or were the others overly aggressive? And then we, we learn from that and we, we, we adapt, but hopefully the customers see it as well. No, I think it's remarkable. I don't see it very often, you know, frankly, especially in finished goods companies that have, you know, the, their brand is on the product and they want, they, you know, they'll, they'll message that their product is the best mousetrap in, in the world. And there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. But in a, a, a finished a, um, design wins company like yourself, you're not looking for one design. You want the next generation, you want the third generation, you want the fourth generation. And that requires a tremendous amount of uh, confidence because at the end, it's all about confidence, you know? You know, can that manufacturer depend on you guys right. to deliver what you said you were going to deliver? So No, it's true. It's always a long-term progression. I, I, I think one of the, the having a long-term vision where you say it's not going to happen. I mean, the automotive, maybe it's our automotive heritage back in the days when cars took five plus years to design instead of the one year cycles right, right. we're now on. Right. Back then, a, a relationship had to be developed over a period of time and you needed to be there over a long period of time. And I think we've used that in, uh, now in our consumer and uh, in, in the AI space as well. It's, no, I think it's, it's a, a very well. refreshing characteristic of the Infineon DNA. Thank you for noticing. Yeah, just in the last minute or so, any parting comments about your presence here at CES? I mean, what's really interesting is that people think CES is just purely about, you know, B2C, big companies fleshing out their goods. Most of my engagement happens to be with B2B companies because everybody comes here. You know, it's a great place to interface and, and network. But any parting messages you want to uh, articulate? No, I, I think you touched on it. I think uh, CS has gone through transitions over the years. It's, it was a, a consumer show, then it became an automotive show. And, well, what, then one thing that's constant is, is uh, a great place to meet. Yes. Uh, and so for us, uh, yes, we like to do demos and we like to show our products, but we do it for what we're doing today, to talk to people and learn things and, and hopefully uh, share some of the things we've learned. Well, Maher, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. This is Mark Bino with Smart Tech Research. Signing off from CES 2026.